Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Sorry for the long delay of videos lately, although I did post a commercial break in this other video just to make it up for it. But it was a long, hectic week. I was ordering packages from Amazon.com. Only four items, which is free DVD box sets of the TV series The Man Show that aired on Comedy Central with Adam Carolla and Jimmy Kimmel. Yep, it's a comedy about men's perspective, you know, the, everything the way men do. It's a guilty pleasure. But it's joining in with the Oompa Band. You know, you actually have a guy who, who drinks a lot of kegs of beer, uh, known as the Fox, who passed away after the first season. And most of all, we get the Juggy Dance Squad. Yeah, lots of hot, steamy, uh, lots of hot chicks, you know, wearing skimpy clothing and all. And best of all, they jump on the trampoline doing all these uh, acrobatic moves and all. You know, doing the splits and somersaults and all. <laughs> and leaps, but okay. You get the idea. I, I thought it would be nice to complete the set. Um, they only have five seasons, but they never released the fifth season, which brought in the new host. Yeah, which also includes uh, Joe Rogan from Fear Factor and Doug, who's a comedian. Um, it um, it aired uh, when I was in high school, although they actually came out in the summer before that. Um, I did used to watch it when I had cable, and I thought it was really fun, in my opinion. I mean, it may not be for everyone, but I can understand. I mean, it could be offended to most people, but who cares? Um, but I figure the main reason why I had to get the series uh, was because um, they have it available on streaming, but you don't get uh, all the special features, so that's another reason to have that. I mean, because you're missing a lot of good stuff. Plus, uh, <laughs> you get tons of episodes, too focusing on them. Uh, but I do wish the fifth season came out on DVD with special features. I mean, say what you will, but I know it's not as good as the ones with Adam and Jimmy, but still. And I know this was before Jimmy Kimmel went on to post his own TV show, post his own talk show on ABC, and his late night talk show and he's still doing it even to this day. Adam Carolla, on the other hand, started out as a radio DJ personality, but he also did a love line with Dr. Drew Pinsky, which aired on K-Rock. But they did actually uh, air the TV version of it on MTV before it got canceled. Um, but to this day, they, they still broadcast love line. Um, yeah, K-Rock, you know, 106.7 in Los Angeles. Yeah. Alternative rock radio station. Okay. <laughs> um, and yes, I do have uh, the DVD that's part of that, which is Girls and Trampolines, but I got that a long time ago. And I have the first season when I bought it at Barnes & Noble in 2013, so there you go. I know there's a few more DVDs. I mean, they have one with... Uh, Man Show Boy, played by Andy, Andy uh, Michelinis. I, I, I hope I said his last name right, but yeah, that's what they focus on. Long before he went on to host his own show on MTV. Um, didn't last. You know. But hey. <laughs> okay. And I also got the movie Stardust, which was directed by Matthew Bond, the same director who gave us Kick-Ass. But, but he also did uh, Layer Cake. And I believe he was also the man uh, joining in with Guy Ritchie for the movies like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch. Yeah. But it, it's a, a fractured fairy tale, you know, kind of like The Princess Bride in a way. I mean, it's actually based on a Neil Gaiman novel, which had uh, Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, Charlie Cox, and Claire Danes. Also, Mars Strong. I saw this back in 2007. 
I really enjoy it and it's very underrated. Um, I might review it someday, but it was nice to get it on Blu-ray because that way I don't have to have a hard time looking for it. So th those were the items I had to take, which I had to wait this long for like a few weeks. And the postal service just, I got so pissed off, so worried, so angry that, you know, it took half of my week to relax and just try to continue to do more videos. I kept on waiting and waiting and waiting until it finally came. I had to call them to see if they're going to show up or not. I had to keep checking my email. I had to, have to keep checking you know, Amazon and everything, and then I had to contact them. I mean, it was like a nightmare. But now that that's over with, you know, I'm just glad everything else is all safe. You know, it's not damaged. Not at all. So now, thank God. <laughs> I get to relax. Not have such a, <laughs> a very hard time. But with that aside, um... I'm going to finally do a review, and this time it's a peanut special because it's Memorial Day weekend. Why not review What Have We Learned, Charlie Brown, which happens to be the 26th primetime animated television special, which kind of plays out like a semi sequel to Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back. And this is supposed to be taking place, you know, after the events were. Charlie Brown uh, joining in with Linus, Pepper and Patty, Marcy with Snoopy and Woodstock, you know, joining in for the ride. As uh, they were posing in as the student exchange uh, program at their school, because you know all the French students were joining in, so they had to go on a trip to France uh, just for that. And plus, they had to stay at the chateau uh, with Pierre and all. Um, so Charlie Brown just took out a photo album, you know, pasting all these pictures that he took. Yeah, I never knew that he actually did took a lot of pictures. And that's where he tells the story to his sister, Sally, about what happened. And focusing on what they learned. Which led to what turns out to be the story of the Omaha Beach of the D-Day invasion that took place in, on June 6, 1944. And it also led to World War I, and that's where we had that famous poem in Flanders Fields by John McCrae. Yeah, Charles M. Schultz was actually thought about you know, creating a special for that after he had uh, his open heart surgery in 1981. That he thought that, would it be cool if Charlie Brown and his gang got lost in the trip, and, and that's what led to the Omaha Beach, and where Linus just focuses and talks about all the info that happened. And that's where we showcase the rotoscoping animation of these newsreel footages of the attack, you know, with several troops and sol soldiers going around, you know, attacking the enemy and all before they died and then of course having trouble with the uh, rental car and all <laughs> but it, it aired on CBS on May 30th 1983 um, during the Memorial Day weekend uh, they also played again in 1984 um, you know, prior to uh, the celebration of, of the D-Day evasion so, anyway let's begin so it's Brad Keston replacing Aaron Skelly as Charlie Brown, Jeremy uh, Sconberg as Linus Van Pelt, Stacey Heather Token as Sally Brown, Brent Hauer and Victoria Vargas as Pepper and Patty. Yeah, they had to use two actors. Michael Dockery as Marcy, Monica Pocker as uh, the French lady who owns uh, the automobile lot. And Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock. Creator written by Charles M. Schultz, uh, joining in with John McRae's um, poem called In Flanders Fields. And it's directed by Bill Melendez. 
The special begins, which it opens at Charlie Brown's house, and this is where you got to see all the stuff that he got. You know, like he has a baseball glove with a baseball, all these tanks, you know, even a, an autograph from a baseball player. You have the Statue of Liberty with uh, the Empire State Building, um, the Mayflower boat. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of toys and memorabilia that he has in his room. Like, I wouldn't believe that he would have tons of great stuff, but it's cool. And that's where you see all these books, you know, like Winnie the Pooh, Kane Arthur, Space Age Stories, uh, Lone Ranger, The Red Baron, and that's where he takes out the photo album of my trip. So he can paste in all the photographs that he took when he was at the trip in France, you know, with his friends, uh, Linus, Pepper and Patty, Marcy, Going in with Snoopy and Woodstock. And that's where Charlie Brown was about to explain to his sister Sally. Where she approaches and asks him about what is he doing. And he explains that they came there for a student exchange program. Sally realized that Charlie Brown had never told her the story that happened afterwards, especially about what happened about the fire in the chateau that they had to stay in and how they got home and ask if he learned anything but from there on that's where we begin to see the flashback which that's where it all happened with Pierre and that little girl which they all left and yeah they got into a, a car accident with Snoopy driving and that's where you have <laughs> basically Marcy ranting in French and then that's when they were on their way, which that's where it led to. So, as they try to begin to head back from the Chateau to the train station, only to return to a trip to London, they were, where they were actually going to return to America by plane, fortunately, um, their rental car was, uh, which was the... Uh, the Citrion 2CV was uh, going for a lot of trouble. You know, the engine died, and Snoopy was trying to fix it, and and it electrocuted him. Suddenly, he kicks the entire car, broken into shambles. I mean, wow! I, I just never knew how strong Snoopy was by kicking through his entire foot. And then, of course, the the mirror fell off, and Woodstock. Uh, was like performing karate, <laughs> hits his um, hand and and foot. <laughs> that was funny. So now um, Charlie Brown, along with the gang, just went to a, a local French restaurant. Um, they had to order whatever they had to choose, but of course Charlie Brown can't read the menu because he doesn't speak French at all. But hey, you got Marcy for your guide, so she'll explain. <laughs> So they got their food, and then they're trying to head back, but since the car was already damaged, you know, Snoopy tried his best to fix it, so they had to exchange it um, in, inside a small French town and go to a car rental where they meet this French lady who immediately accepts uh, a brand new car after realizing that Snoopy is a World War I flying ace <laughs> as he dresses up and once they got the new car which that's where it's another uh, Satrion 2CV only this time it's the one where you had to go outside you know turn in the crank all the way so that way it starts the engine and yeah it's one of those hard uh, vehicles where you had to do that and I don't blame Charlie Brown for having to didn't want to go outside and, and crank it because that's where it's gonna hurt his hand okay so anyway they they drove by and they soon got lost and they camp at a nearby beach at night so hoping that once they get up the next day they'll be able to be on their way but Linus somehow discovers something completely familiar 
And that's where, during daybreak, he found out that, believe it or not, they were at Omaha Beach. And that's where it takes place uh, during the D-Day invasion, you know, the battle that happened, where millions of soldiers had fought, you know, all these um, flying planes, um, all these battleships, boats and all, uh, they're with all these emission machine guns and and all in all I mean this was like the biggest battle of all of all time and of course if you saw Saber Pirate Ryan you'll definitely see this amazing battle that was very br very brutal and gory and all as you can see yeah and 3,000 soldiers allies and all have been killed during that particular war and then next thing you know there was a memorial service at the cemetery you see like um, the cliff and you saw the, um, the cross and it even tells you the message about the chaos that happened there that's be soon become the the biggest memory of them all and once they got into the American cemetery on the corner um, that's where you see all these crosses of all the soldiers who lied there. That's where we get to hear a message from um, President uh, and General Dwight D. Eisenhower. And he's, he's represented seeing the experience of the battle that took place. And of course you do hear the archival news footage as used and you see the rotoscoping animation that's blending in uh, using all these uh, wonderful colors, you know, all vivid and all. I mean, of course, to blend, it's not black and white, but they tend to blend it in perfectly to showcase the, the events that took place. And it was like, wow, probably the biggest battle you'll ever seen on a uh, special like this. So, that's where it continues. They, they had to go, they had to go straight to north. They headed uh, towards uh, White Pess, which uh, Linus recognized the site of a series of battles during World War I. And that's where they arrive at the field filled with red poppies, which in the center, there's a cross. And that's where we get to the, the poem from In Flanders Fields. And this is what led to the poem that Linus Saxe said, word by word, directly from McCray. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row and row that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing, flying the scarce herd amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we live, fell dawn, saw sunset glow, love and were love, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the toe, to you, from fallen hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if we break for faith with us who died, we shall not sleep. Through poppies grow in Flanders Field. Yeah, and that's where they continue to go around into the, the field. We see many of these poppies, we see all the crosses and all these other um, statues and all, and the memoriam. And this is where Linus said to Charlie Brown, What have we learned, Charlie Brown? Which is actually a nod to what has mankind learned from war? But to that question. Yeah. And that's how the special really, um, in retrospective, uh, portrays as a tribute. Charles M. Schultz definitely took the risk to actually use this particular uh, tribute for the evasion that happened at Omaha Beach and everything and how the soldiers who had fought there had died you know for what they could uh, they died 
you know, fighting for freedom. Um, but it's, and we're always going to be remembered by then for those uh, who lost their their loved ones, uh, you know, who actually fought uh, during the war. It really brought a lot of history for those that we lost. Anyway, uh, but for this special alone, I mean, yes, there there were some repetitive scenes, you know, like when the Snoopy uh, drove by with the new uh, car, or sometimes even the previous car. There's like a bunch of seagulls after they just uh, went out and trying to find a place to, to stay or trying to get to north all the way from there to London, which they're having hard times, you know, finding the place. I mean, all these seagulls keep coming by, and, and Snoopy uh, is just marching them until suddenly uh, one seagull came by and, and bit his butt <laughs> or his foot. And then the, um, <laughs> the scene where they got the new uh, Satrion the 2CV, which comes with the crank, that Snoopy had to force Charlie Brown to get outside. Um, use the crank to spin it around. I'm cranking the ignition to the car and Snoopy is trying to start the engine as quickly as possible so that way they're going to be on their way until suddenly you know it went out of control got him electrocuted and hurt his hand really bad and and, and of course Pepper and Patty just saying to Charlie Brown you know Quit counting around. We're we're already making in progress or any of this stuff. I, I mean, come on, Pepper and Patty. You just got hurt for crying out loud. Trying to start the engine that Snoopy is trying to do. Yeah. And there's even one moment too when <laughs> uh, he almost accidentally run over um, the kid in the bike, and he was speaking in French, and and then <laughs> Snoopy just kisses him in the nose. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Or another scene where Pepper and Patty was trying to contact this French boy um, in France, but then she accidentally said, well, by translation to Marcy, that he just uh, said two tickets to uh, to some play going around. <laughs> but he was trying to ask some directions, trying to head by, focusing on World War One. But um. But it's a very um, tribute special that they ever had done, and it's nice to have Linus, you know, bringing in all the information that he discovered, and, you know, plus he read a book while they went to a local restaurant, you know, during the rain that was happening, and showcasing everything that took place and all. I mean, that was very special. And... I, I really love it. It really works well as, as a semi sequel to Bon Voyage Charlie Brown Don't Come Back. I mean, it's almost like something we didn't expect. It's almost like deleted scenes, you know, put in together. It, I mean, if they actually put the special together with that movie, I bet it would have been almost um, nearly two hours. I mean, think about that. Because of the short running time. Yeah. That was the case, <laughs> um, and it is on DVD. Um, it was part of the uh, yeah. It's available under the Peanuts Emmy Honored uh, Collection DVD, which they also have it on iTunes as well. Well, of course, a lot of Peanuts specials is going to be available, um, and that was released for the first time because I was stuck with the old VHS tape that I got um, at Thrifty a long time ago, and the quality wasn't very good, but at least now I get to see them better quality. Yeah, thank God for that. The special was nominated for an Emmy, but it didn't win. However, it did got a Peabody Award for its excellence. Schultz himself uh, explained about the very gratifying response that many wonderful letters that it was appreciated by young viewers around who said that they now understood what had happened on June 6, 1944, 
that's why they use the subtitle attribute because they want it to be exactly as well told as understand from everyone it even shows that the peanuts game themselves you know are exactly using the subject in a whole very real manner that no other animated characters would destroy and that's exactly what he responded so anyway that's what have you learned Charlie Brown and I give the special five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later and also have a special Memorial Day weekend